music and Christmas time there are actually a lot of songs that we love to sing especially about angels there's hark the herald angels sing or there's the um, angels we have heard on high you know all those awesome songs but then there's also some like lines and other songs that maybe they're not about angels but the lines emphasize the power of them this month we are talking about angels and all the angels that God sent to deliver the good news of Jesus to people in the Bible and then also to spread that message to everyone even today and I think we're going to get a message from our angel yes we did thank you angel okay let's see what our message says it says Jesus calms our fears and that is a great message for us to have today so I think Yep, it's about time. Gabriel just posted his second video, so let's go ahead and see what he said. Hey, this is Gabriel's Travel Log, Volume 3. Hey, what's up, Gabe's gang? Uh, do you remember last week I told you uh, about God's message to Zechariah, uh, that it was the beginning of something really big? <laughs> well, when I'm right... I'm really right, because I'm about to tell you a story that will blow your mind. It did mine. I mean, it was an unbelievable honor to be the messenger to, uh, well, wait, wait, let's, let's start at the beginning. Um, Father God asked me to take a message to a girl in Israel. Uh, if I'm being honest, it was a bit of a navigational challenge because she lived in a tiny village uh, called Nazareth. And that is right on the path to nowhere. But um, I found it and uh, my hair was still looking fabulous. Uh, here's uh, a selfie to prove it. 
So I found the right house and I decided to do my famous move. I call it the appear out of nowhere move uh, because I just, well, appear out of nowhere. Actually, I felt bad about that because I really did scare this girl. Uh, I'm always scaring everyone, uh, just as Zachariah. Here's a picture of Mary. See that look? God gave me some epic lines to deliver, and I must say, I nailed it. I said, greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. Naturally, uh, this news was a lot to take in, and Mary asked how this could happen because she hadn't been married yet. Well, I told her the Holy Spirit was going to take care of everything. And then I told her that her relative Elizabeth was also going to have a baby. I wanted her to know that she can trust God because no word from God will ever fail. <laughs> Yay, I told her that. <laughs> I like to go bragging about how awesome God is. Uh, he deserves it. So what do you think Mary said to me then? Well, just imagine uh, you've been told you are going to have a baby, even though you aren't married yet, and your baby is the savior of the world, the son of God. You want to know what she said? You think I'm going to tell you, right? Well, well of course I am. She said, now get this, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said to me come true. That's what I'm talking about. And that, folks, is how you trust God. She was still scared about following God's plan for her, but she trusted God more than she was afraid. After that, Mary took off to Elizabeth's house and found out that she was pregnant, just like I told her. And Mary's fiance, Joseph, well, as you can imagine, he was having a hard time. He planned to quietly get out of marrying Mary, but God sent an angel to talk to him in a dream. Now, I'm not saying it was me who visited Joseph's dream, but I'm also not saying it wasn't me. Uh, that angel told Joseph to marry Mary and to name the baby Jesus. Oh, and by the way, uh, he's going to save all people from their sins, so he's going to be an awesome son. And do you know what Joseph did? He also trusted God. It's so refreshing when people do that. Here's a shot of the happy couple. These two have a lot of changes coming, but they are working hard to trust God when they feel afraid. Well, that's it for now, but I'm sure my baby message delivery service isn't finished yet. Catch you later, Gabe's gang. object lesson to do with you today and it involves water and water is something that's around us all the time right we wash our hands we cook with it it rains outside but I wonder if you really observe or look at water and today 
it's gonna help us to understand our big idea better. So what I did was I colored some water with some food dye, um, green, as you can see, I got it on me too. So always make sure you have something around to wipe your hands off with. And then I have toothpicks and I have some soap and I'm sure you're wondering, what are we gonna do today? Well, I'm excited that you're asking that question, so let's find out. I'm gonna take some of my water right here and I'm gonna add it to, let me put that right there. I'm gonna add it to this, this paper here. And I'm gonna just look at that, isn't that cool? You would think that water would kinda of like run, but it doesn't. And it doesn't run because it has surface tension, which is really cool. It, it's kinda of like a skin and it holds it all together. And it makes droplets, look, I made like a little flower. Isn't that fun? Okay, so. I have a question for you. Let's pretend that these little water droplets represent fear. Are there things in your life that you're afraid of or that you worry about? I think everybody has something that they're concerned about, something that's fearful to them. I think we all deal with fear and that's okay. The best thing that I love about that is that God does not let us stay in that fear, that he can help us overcome it and that we don't have to be like consumed with it or overwhelmed by fear. So if I were to take my toothpick right here and I were to put it into one of these water droplets, do you think that it would pierce it, break it and make the water run? Or do you think that I could actually connect the water droplets together and make a bigger one? What do you think? Well, let's find out. Huh, it didn't break it. Let me see if I can connect it. Ooh, look at that. This is so cool. I am making a bigger water droplet. Oop, that's not gonna work. Let me do these. Oh, those are kind of far away. Oh, that's sad. <gasps> there we go. Ooh, awesome. So, let's think about our fears. At first, they kind of start small. They're inconsequential. You have like this little bit of fear. But if you spend time thinking about it and meditating on it, after a while, like your heart gets involved and you feel afraid. And then it becomes a much bigger situation than it had been when it first started. And fear, quite honestly, can be overwhelming and it can be debilitating, which means that you're not able to do things because you're controlled by the fear. It will control your choices, it will control your actions, and it can be overwhelming. But the good news is that God does not want you to be overwhelmed by fear. And if we're honest with each other, fear feels awful. It's terrible. And God does not want you to be stuck in that prison. So what overcomes fear? The Bible tells us that perfect love casts out fear. And God's love is perfect. It's also very strong and it's powerful. So what would happen, this is gonna be interesting, if I were to add soap onto the same toothpick that I used to connect the water droplets together, what would happen then? Do you think that it would break the surface tension? Or do you think that it'll just stay the same? What do you think? Well, let's find out. And I put it in this really big blob. Ha! <laughs> that was fun. It broke it. It broke the water, uh, the surface tension. Let me see this one here. Nice. So God's love can do the same thing if you're experiencing fear. If you allow God's love to be a part of your thoughts, that you meditate on that, that you allow his love to fill your heart, then it can break the stronghold of fear. Now, fear is still there. Okay, the water didn't go anywhere, but the, the stronghold of it broke. And you and I have a decision to make. We can either focus on the fear and allow that to become a bigger mess, a bigger problem, or we can focus on God and his love and his promises towards us and allow his love to fill us with peace. So my hope is that you would do the latter and focus on God and allow him to break the stronghold of fear over your life. Hey, so that was a really cool object lesson, wasn't it? And this is actually an object lesson you guys could even try at your homes. I would encourage you guys to try it out. 
But now I want to read a scripture verse that talks about how Jesus can calm our fears. This scripture verse is from 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. Grab your Bibles and read along with me. It says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. I want to read it one more time. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. So Jesus showed his perfect love for us, didn't he? What are some ways he did that? Well, for starters, he left heaven in his heavenly place with the Father and came to earth and to be born as a, essentially a, a poor person where he, he didn't have a whole lot. I mean, in the place he lived, he, didn't, he wasn't born in a palace or anything. Um, so that shows his love. What about other ways? Well, obviously, he died for our sins because he loved us so much. That's a pretty big thing. But what about even right now or even before we chose to follow him, he died for us. He died for those who would uh, reject him. He died for people who were still sinful. He doesn't wait for us to be perfect before he chooses to love us, before he chooses to uh, draw us to him. He still loves us as we are. He still wants us to change and grow closer to him and be more like Jesus. But he doesn't hate us before we get there. He loves us even right now as we're learning more about him and learning to trust in him. And that's why we want to continue to put our trust in him and learn to love him back because when we love Jesus and we really trust in him, even in those fearful situations, we know it's going to turn out okay. It makes it a little easier. It may be still hard knowing that he has our backs and that he knows what's best for us and he's uh, going to help us through those situations. So I have another scripture first I want to read. This is from Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. It says, For the Lord your God is living among you. He's a mighty Savior. He will take delight in you with gladness. With his love, he will calm all your fears. He rejoice over you with joyful songs. And that's from the uh, New Living Translation, if you want to read along with us. So now, I want you all to pray with me. I want you to pray that God would help you with those things that make you fearful. Maybe it's a uh, situation at school, or maybe it's a certain subject at school, or maybe whatever it is may be that is causing you fear, that we would ask God to take hold of that. That we would trust in Him. In those moments where you feel fearful or stressed or worried, just ask Him for help and call on His name. And He says when we choose to trust in Him, He would be there for us. The Bible also says in Romans that God works together all things for the good of those who love Him and have been called according to His purpose. So let's pray and trust in that God right now. God, we thank You so much. God, we thank you that uh, you are the God of our fears and things that worry us most, that they are small in your eyes. The things that seem so big and um, so hard for us, God, thank you so much that they are so small for you, it's so easy for you to, to handle. So God, I pray that you would help us to put those things in your hands so that we don't have to worry about them, so we don't have to be fearful. But God, even in those moments where we are fearful, Help us to trust in you. When we don't know the answer or we can't see how it's going to end up, God, help us to trust that you know the results and you will not um, cause us to fall. God, I pray that when those fears come, that we would not allow them to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but we would ask you for help. We would share those fears with you. And we would even ask other people for help and share those things that are causing us stress so that other people can pray for us, other people can give us guidance or wisdom, because often you want to use other people. But help us to not be overcome and taken over by our fears, but to trust in you. Thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our Played It or Hate It Christmas special. This is the challenge where we have two cooking competitors compete to make the best design Christmas uh, dessert. Here we have two gingerbread houses, and here we have our contestants. May I introduce Miss Kristen, who is here for our last Christmas edition, where she decorated an amazing gingerbread head, and it tasted delicious. We also have a newcomer, Miss Louisana who will be uh, trying out and showcasing her amazing cooking and decorating talents. Are you both ready? Yes! Ready. So our contestants will have 20 minutes 
to decorate their gingerbread houses. At the end, we will have a special guest judge and myself judge which house looks the best. Let's plate it or hate it. You guys ready? We're ready. All right, let's get our timer on. Ready, set, go! See, Kristen is off to an early start. So I'm putting the sprinkles on while the icing is still wet and hope to taste. I'm putting some icing lines here because I want to go for like a candy cane brick look. <laughs> So what would it mean to win the, uh, the competition today? It will mean the world to me. The world. Last year, I did not win my family's ginger red house contest. I see. So I would feel really excited to have redemption. We now have one minute left on the timer. Please make sure everything is presentation ready. The judging. Great job, chefs. Great job. So, tell me about the process. How did? How do you all feel? It was a lot. It was yes. crazy. Just oh. trying to finish. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure. These competitions. So, uh, Louis, why don't you tell us about your gingerbread house? Well, I was going for a homey peppermint yeah, type of cozy feeling here. Yeah, I can feel the peppermint just looking at yeah. it. Yeah. Absolutely. So when you turn on your, your fireplace, you know you'll get that peppermint mm. aroma into your home smelling mm. fresh. Very nice. Yes, yes, yes. No need to brush your teeth in that house. All right, awesome. <laughs> so Kristen, please tell us about your house. I wanted to make sure that everything was kind of like patterned and like symmetrical. I see, yes. So I tried to make sure that like all the colors were like equally repeated and I wanted to really build my like wreath on the side and my bow and tree in the front um because that candy is one where you can like pull it apart unlike very the other nice. candies very nice well i uh, appreciate both of your houses and they both look amazing however i will not be judging your houses so my opinion does not matter so i'm going to ask our guest celebrity judge to come in but first Ooh. i'm going to ask you all to leave the premises and our guest judge will decide the winner of this Christmas special, plate it or hate it. It's Miss Alucci, come on in. So glad you could join us. So please tell us, what are, you, what are your thoughts? All right, well, hi everybody. Um, my first thought is I love all the color on this one and the front work. Like, look at that. It has the candy cane kind of like outlining. And they made like a bow. This one, okay, so the work that was on this one for the ceiling, like they crushed some of the... Mm, yes the candy canes. I think they both put in a lot of like good work They should here. both be proud of their houses. I, I would, like some person paid a lot of attention to the roof, another person paid a lot of attention to the front, like they even have like a pile looking like a little tree over there. They did good. So I have to say which one, which yes, one I think. you can only choose one, unfortunately. Can I take like half of one and half of the no, other? No, unfortunately, we're not that generous here. Okay, well, Okay, one more time for the front. Can I turn them? Mm-hmm, absolutely. I... Wow, that's pretty cool. I like the top. You know, I think I'm going to go with this one. Our contestants have worked. Our judge has spoken. Mm -hmm. And a decision has been made. 
Which gingerbread house will it be? Will it be the one on the left or the one on the right? Will it be Kristen's or Louis Hanna's? Will it be for all the grandmothers or all for all the fans out there? Only time will tell. And that time is now. Right after this commercial break, no, I'm sorry guys. Oh, and the winner of this year's Christmas special, Play It or Hate It, is in this room right now. Oh my God. And we can't wait to share that, Who aren't you? So I'm excited. I was. And we're excited together to share this monument moment for a very special individual. And that person will be Kristen's Gingerbread House. <laughs> It was a very close battle. It has been decided. Thank you guys for joining us for another season of our Christmas special for Play It or Hate It. Please join us next time. Alright, now don't be afraid, but did you actually think I was going to let you guys go without giving you a challenge for this week? please. So my challenge for you this week is to share your story. Isaiah told us about how the power of sharing your story with other people can help them and how sharing and talking to other people can also help calm your fears as well. So that's my challenge for you this week, to share your story and to listen to someone else's. So I'll see you guys next week. Who do you think that Gabriel's going to visit then? See ya!